one of the things that people often sort of consider to be the, the, the great achievement of science is its ability to predict what's going to happen in some particular mm -hmm. system. And sort of the, the classic example of this from 300 years ago is the motion of planets. You want to find out where the Earth will be a million years from now. You might think you would just have to trace the Earth for a million orbits. But in fact, there's a little mathematical formula that tells you this is where the Earth will be on its idealized ellipse or whatever at that time. And that's been kind of the, the, uh, the, the characteristic um, uh, example of, uh, of what we h hope to get from science, this, this ability to say, let's be able to predict what a system will do without just having to watch and see what it does. So one question is, is that really the correct model for what can be achieved in science or not? Will we always be able to take these systems and in a sense outrun them with our own intelligence or methods or, or science? And so in a, sense, in a sense, science has been about this kind of competition between us as predictors and observers of the natural world and the natural world itself as a thing that just does what it does. Well, one of the things that has emerged from the kinds of things that I've studied is that that picture is, is quite incomplete, that it really isn't the case that we can expect always to be above nature in that kind of way. We sort of have to really, we, we get into the, the fundamental questions of how can we compare the processes that go on in nature with the processes that go on in our brains or in our mathematics or in our scientific theories. And one thing to do is to sort of find a way to think about all of these things together. And I think computation is sort of a, a convenient metaphor for all of these things. We can think about the processes that go on in nature as computations. We can think about the operation of our scientific theories, our brains. These are all to be thought of as computations. Mm -hmm. And then the key question is, how do these computations compare? Are our brains and our mathematics and so on somehow fundamentally superior computations to the ones that go on in the actual systems in nature? So one of the, one of the things that I've, I've found is that I think that they're not that there's this principle of computational equivalence that kind of shows that there is a, a fundamental equivalence between the kinds of computations that go on in the natural world and even in systems with very simple underlying rules and the kinds of computations that can go on in our brains or in our methods of analysis and, and mathematics and so on. So it's this, this principle of computational equivalence tells us that actually what we've seen so far in science is the unusual case. It's the case where things aren't equivalent in their computation to us. It's the case where the things that we see in nature are somehow uh, simpler. They're somehow computationally reducible um, as compared to the more common, I think, case where the computations that are going on in the systems in nature are fundamentally equivalent to the computations that we're able to do as observers or analyzers of nature. And in the case where these things are equivalent, there emerges this kind of idea of computational irreducibility that what happens in nature is something that is equivalent to what's happening in our brains, so we can't expect to outrun what's happening in nature. So what becomes very important then is to make the best possible simulation. Right. So that kind of puts pressure on the need to find the simplest possible underlying rules that represent a particular kind of system. Right. Um, but this means that, that there is sort of a, a fundamental limit to what we can expect to be able to predict in, in, in science. And sort of the challenge which I've spent many years trying to, trying to meet, is to sort of build up a new kind of science um, in which it is sort of taken for granted that there'll be lots of computational irreducibility, but then what can one still say in science? They're different kinds of conclusions than we've been used to seeing in science.